For centuries, the African subcontinent was a dark and exotic hinterland to all but its inhabitants and those adventurous explorers who sought refuge in its savage beauty. The discovery of diamonds changed all that. Early pioneers braved the dangers of a sometimes bleak and hostile land in search of these glittering gems. This is the story of one diamond, the place of its birth and the extraordinary journey from rough stone to finely polished jewel. Since the late 1860s, when the first South African diamonds were discovered, the search for these precious stones has driven men to the limits of endurance. News of these discoveries caused a stampede by thousands of prospectors from all over the world. Digging like ants, they transformed vast areas of barren felt into sprawling camps and mining towns. Less than a hundred miles from the pioneer town of Johannesburg, the premier diamond mine yielded by far the largest diamond pipe in South Africa and as far as is known, the oldest in the world. This remarkable mine witnessed its first great discovery on a late afternoon on Thursday the 26th of January 1905. A diamond of truly massive proportions was found about nine meters below the surface by the mine surface manager, Fred Daddy Wells. The first in an impressive line of great gemstones culminating almost nine decades later in the discovery of the centenary diamond. Company chairman Thomas Cullinan greeted the large bright stone with considerable skepticism. This soon gave way to euphoria when this massive crystal was confirmed as a marvelous blue-white diamond of exceptional purity, weighing an astonishing 3,106 metric carats. They named it the Cullinan Diamond. Presented by General Louis Botha on behalf of the Transvaal government to Edward VII, the celebrated firm of I.J. Asher of Amsterdam was entrusted the task of cutting the stone, the largest gem quality diamond ever mined. Full of trepidation, Joseph Asher cleaved the diamond on the second attempt. And then again. All in all, splitting the Cullinan diamond into nine principal gems, 96 small brilliants, and more than nine carats of fragments. The two largest gems were destined for immortality as the world's largest perfect polished diamonds. They have now become a part of history, viewed by millions of tourists who flock to the Tower of London to glimpse the crown jewels. Cullen and One, or the Great Star of Africa, is set in the Imperial Scepter. Cullen and Two graces the Imperial State Crown, a regal journey's end far removed from the remote mine where the Cullen and Diamond was found. But the real journey began over a thousand million years ago in the Earth's mantle. Diamonds crystallized from carbon over extended periods in vast reservoirs of molten magma. Millennia ago, these molten rivers bearing their precious cargo were forced upward, chemically transforming in the course of their incredible journey. They pierced the Earth's crust and solidified in a multitude of relatively small fissures and pipes. About 1,200 million years ago, this happened in the Transvaal, South Africa, to form the Kimberlite Pipe, today called the Premier Diamond Mine. Where men once dug for diamonds under the blazing sun, access to the Kimberlite Pipe is now gained by our underground shafts. After drilling and blasting, load haul dump trucks transport the Kimberlite to the rock breaker, where it is broken down further for transportation to the treatment plant. Some two million carats of diamonds are extracted each year from the De Beers-owned Premier Mine. About 80% is industrial grade. The remaining 20% are gems. 
many of them beautiful diamonds of excellent quality, and some of them very large. Because of the Premier Mine's reputation for yielding exceptional gems, its ore treatment plant has been specially designed to capture larger stones. Ore treated at Premier is initially crushed to a maximum size of 60 millimeters. This material is then washed, screened and examined by X-ray machine to remove larger diamonds before the material is recrushed. It was here, in July 1986, during the routine X-ray process, that another magnificent gemstone was discovered. Eighty years after the discovery of the Cullinan gem some nine meters from the surface, a 599 carat centenary diamond emerged from far, far greater depths. After the Cullinan, the centenary stone is by far the largest diamond discovered in the eight decades of the mine's existence. Given the exceptional size, color and quality of the diamond, De Beers' primary objective was to provide ideal conditions in which to manufacture the centenary rough. The first step was to find the cutter. For centuries, the port of Antwerp has been the home of the diamond cutter, an art often passed down from father to son in an unbroken tradition spanning centuries. Today, Antwerp is still the principal world trading center and an important manufacturing center specializing in larger, more difficult stones. In Antwerp's Diamant Kring or Diamond Exchange, traders from all continents and cultures converse as they have done for centuries in the universal language of the diamond. It was to this rich heritage that De Beers turned for the expertise to supervise the cutting and polishing of the centenary diamond. Gabby Tolkowski is a fifth generation Antwerp diamond cutter with a distinguished family history. His great uncle Marcel Tolkowski first pioneered the modern brilliant cut, which is today still an industry standard. Employed by De Beers in Antwerp, Gabby Tolkowski regularly visits the Central Selling Organization, or CSO, in London. In September of 1987, he was called to the CSO to examine the centenary diamond. The CSO is the International Producers Cooperative, handling the lion's share of the world diamond market. Around 80% of all rough gems in the world pass through number 17, Charterhouse Street. Eight floors are allotted to sorting and grading the stones by quality, color, shape and size into more than 5,000 individual classifications. Each year, millions of carats pass through the expert hands of highly trained personnel. On this overcast September day, shrouded in secrecy, 599 of those carats were concentrated in a single magnificent gemstone, the centenary diamond. Temporarily, under the protective custody of the CSO, prior to its return to South Africa for cutting and polishing, Gabby Tolkowski came face to face with a centenary for the first time. He was astounded. There lay before him a top color flawless diamond of extraordinary size and quality, which left no doubt that within its ample proportions was a magnificent gem. The first public announcement of the diamond's discovery was made at De Beers Centenary Celebrations in Kimberley, the company's birthplace. We have recovered at the Premier Mine a diamond of 599 carats, which is perfect in color. Indeed, it is one of the largest top color diamonds ever found. We are having it cut and polished in South Africa in consultation with our Mr. Gabby Tolkowski. Gabby Tolkowski joined forces with veteran diamond expert Mick Harris, responsible for coordinating the South African operation. Starting from scratch, they set about planning an operating base, an environment sympathetic in every conceivable aspect to cutting and polishing the centenary diamond. With Mick Harris supervising the installation, Gabby set about examining the many possibilities for the centenary stone. They examined countless models of the diamond ground into symmetrical shapes, weighing them and estimating what size they could achieve. All the preliminary examinations led to the same conclusion. The remarkable shape and volume of the stone confirmed a magnificent latent jewel within its rough exterior. Over the ensuing weeks, using a microscope linked to a camera, they carefully examined every aspect of the stone. A 
I was so lucky to have this microscope because that was traveling into a world which is, with every diamond, is an unknown world. You travel into the fantastic. You're looking into a stone which is transparent. But at the same time, it's a mirror. It's a transparent mirror. I mean, it was hypnotizing. Initial scrutiny indicated that the utmost care should be exercised in removing the rough edges from the diamond in preparation for polishing. After careful deliberation, it was decided that the gentlest method was the oldest technique known to man, curving. This involved painstakingly rubbing away the outer edges of the rough stone by hand, diamond against diamond. If I must recall the 154 days of curving to remove all the pieces that I had to remove, I mean, there were moments where I said to myself, Gabby, what did you start? You'll never finish it. It's impossible. I mean, there were places where I had to go into the stone, into depths. I, I know that human never did it by hand. So the only way was to caress it with another diamond and, and enter, penetrate into its volume where it needed to remove those pieces so that it would not hamper polishing afterwards. Days merged into weeks and then months. After removing all those pieces, we suddenly were confronted with a volume which was shaped by curving. The stone was as big, as large as it was in the beginning. It just was cleaned up. It became ready. The newly shaped gemstone served only to confirm the unique potential of the centenary diamond. Incorporating all the surface elements of the curved stone, they set about designing new shapes and new conceptions. For three long years, this small laboratory outside Johannesburg, a few miles south of the famous Premier Mine, formed the locus for the preparation, cutting and polishing of this remarkable stone. It became home for a carefully selected team, which was emerging around the gem, each member an acknowledged expert in his highly specialized field. Dozens of resin models of the centenary were designed and ground into an astonishing variety of shapes. It was an opportunity to precisely determine the most suitable shape within the volume of the centenary rough, for there could be no margin of error on the diamond itself. By early 1990, the polishing had begun. There were portions of the diamond which had to be removed even before the final shape was confirmed. They polished very fine layers off the diamond, rather like peeling a potato round and round very carefully. So there was always something left of the peel, telltale signs of the remaining natural surface of the diamond. After studying hundreds of models, they selected nine of the most beautiful shapes. These were polished in lead crystal, presenting an astonishing array of shapes and possible ways of polishing the diamond.
the choice was narrowed to an approximate final shape, an entirely original heart shape. By March 1990, there remained the final challenge, polishing the centenary diamond to its ultimate proportions. The core team of polishers were Jeff Wallet and Jim Nash. Two Englishmen with extensive knowledge and experience in polishing large, unusual stones. And Darby Duplessis, the man who polished the famous Premier Rose. He contributed a wealth of experience and polishing skill. Despite over a hundred years of combined experience, nothing could have fully prepared the team for polishing a stone the size of the centenary. August of 1990, the distinctive shape of the emerging stone was unmistakable. The rough edges, protrusions and concaves were rapidly disappearing. By polishing exquisitely shallow angles of the curved stone, they remained true to the natural contours of the centenary rough. By January 1991, after nearly three years, the centenary was nearing completion. Throughout history, most major diamonds have been polished very simply, the primary objective being to retain maximum weight, often resulting in considerable dispersion of light. The challenge of the centenary diamond lay in faceting angles calculated to reflect the maximum amount of light and color back at the observer. The long months studying the structure of the diamond were beginning to pay off. By April 1991, only the finishing touches remained and the light moving within the diamond exceeded their wildest expectation. The jewel was truly on fire. The centenary diamond was ready for the world to see. <sighs> within days, the centenary diamond emerged in London at the official press launch where this magnificent jewel captured the world's imagination. Mr. Polkowski and his team have spent the last three years preparing, cutting and polishing the stone. And today we will unveil to you a truly unique diamond, the result of his hard work. The centenary diamond now weighs 273 carats and is, we believe, the largest, finest quality, top color polished diamond in the world outside the crown jewels. That evening at a special charity function in the Tower of London, the gem was revealed to a gathering of diamond luminaries from across the globe. For a brief moment, the centenary diamond assumed its rightful place amongst the world's greatest jewels in the Tower of London. A regal setting for the reunion of the three greatest jewels of all time, far, far from their dusty origin in the premier mine. Guest of honor at the function was Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of York, admiring a jewel truly fit for royalty. It's like eternal light, isn't it? You can remember right. it, you put it in your memory. Exactly. And always re-visualize it. It's so full of light, isn't it? Millennia in the making, years in the cutting and polishing, the life of the centenary diamond has just begun. For centuries to come, it will stand as a vivid example of nature's miracles and as a testament to the courage, skills and vision of those who took it from the earth and liberated its fiery soul. <laughs>